Poetry what comes to your mind when you hear the word poetry? I can guess for you, think of a love poem, an artist, or some piece of words with rhyming words. The real definition of poetry is that it is a written literary work in verses of high quality showing imagination and deep feelings with elegant and beautiful quality. In our current world of the 21st century, many people do not embrace the importance of poetry as it was on the day of Romeo and Juliet. Back then people expressed their emotions through the words of poetry. Poetry comes as an inspirational element to the human heart since it soothes the heart and the mind. So let us now talk about poetry in terms of its importance to the society. Imagine yourself sitting in a room and a person is reciting sweet words from lines in a poem, it feels so inspiring and even draws out emotions from within you. How many people know the techniques on how to write a poem or basically poetry? Many will say that you have to have lines of rhyming and metaphorical words that when recited should create some rhythm. Let me teach you a few basic things about writing poetry that will be both educative and inspiring to both you and your audience. 1. The poet must understand what the audience intends to hear from this poem. Secondly, the writer should also determine what feelings will be triggered to the audience once they read that piece of work. Lastly, the writer must ensure that all the rules of writing poetry are followed to the letter to ensure that the poem was written as authentic and has a flow of ideas. Poetry is of great importance to society as it teaches them about their cultural and linguistic history since poetry is as old as the human language. Secondly, it teaches individuals ways of expressing their emotions through art and artistic work. The art of writing poetry is a particular language and a natural gift that belongs to a certain individual within society. The individuals have the ability to express their intuitive ideas and feelings to members of the society in order to teach the culture, history, and lingual origin of the involved community or society. What does poetry mean? You can find many definitions of poetry in textbooks and classrooms, all very good to teach the forms of poetry and to learn about the great poets of the past. Those who set the groundwork for great poetry lived in a time far removed from our own when poetry was everything and to know the poets and their work was considered a great accomplishment. In today's world many people that I have talked to think poetry is too slow and boring to bother with. If they took the time they would understand the calming effects and mental exercise gained through reading poetry were great rewards for just a little more effort and time taken to read it. To me, poetry means a chance to go into a calm and peaceful world, far from the rush and bustle of the modern world. While at the same time poetry can tell exciting stories of a time and people long past. From the days of knights and kings to the Victorian age with its grand homes and ancient etiquette. I see poetry as a portal to another time, another world, and deeds of bravery, tragedy, and love all recounted within one poetical work. Shakespeare, Keats, Scott and so many others were the most popular authors of the published world many years ago. Mostly because they wrote in the age of poetry and their works still live on because of those who take the time to learn of their works and the beauty of poetry. Poems can express feelings that we may otherwise not know how to show, they can bring someone to tears or a smile to the face of the forlorn. Many years ago even battle cries were written in the style of poetry to rhyme and put courage into the hearts of the soldiers. Take a little time, read some poems from the great poets of the past and you will discover what poetry can mean to you. The importance of poetry. Sadly, poetry seems to be becoming a lost form of art. This is such a shame considering no one seems to appreciate and even realize the true beauty and elegance of poetry. In many ways, poetry can have very positive impacts on many people's lives. The beautiful flow of the words can speak to people in more ways than any of us may know. Poetry is very spiritual and can inspire anyone when they need some guiding words. Depending on what the story of the poem is, the author can trigger many different emotions in their readers. Some poems may have very happy messages while others may deliver sad messages. But we all need those guiding words each at different points in our lives. A lot of times, authors of poems will write about real-life events. The best way to get their stories across is by channeling really emotional moments such as falling in love, or maybe, falling out of it. This could also be some of the most relatable topics. We reach for these types of stories to read because we all want to know that we are not alone in this world and that someone else could actually be experiencing, or have experienced something similar to our own life events. Another important topic that poems tend to portray is mental illness. 
Personally, I have read many beautifully heartbreaking poems surrounding anxiety and depression. Along with happy emotions like falling in love, it's very important that readers know that it's okay to feel these sad emotions as well. Maybe reading a beautiful poem about these two subjects could inspire someone and maybe even save their life. No one ever knows how words could have such a strong impact on another person's life. An author never knows how their work is going to impact or maybe even change a person's life. Poetry is such beautiful art that deserves to be cherished not only now, but for the rest of its existence. Poetry and history. Poetry dates back to the time where words were not written down. Instead, stories, laws, and histories were told orally in the poetic style. Many tales, whether true or not, were memorized by reciting the almost lyrical verse. There are tales such as Gilgamesh, Beowulf, the Iliad, and the Odyssey and so many others. These poems told of the wondrous feats of mighty warriors to the way they met their death. In the Native American culture reciting history in the poetic form was also a common thing. One such poem is the Song of Hiawatha, written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I really enjoyed reading this tale written in a poem. Another I can name would be Marmion by Sir Walter Scott. Marmion and Beowulf are two of my favorites. They both tell tales of the deeds of two different men. In Marmion one of the main characters is the knight whose name is Marmion, he is a hero in the eyes of many but to two young women, he is a cruel villain. One young woman left her home, a convent where she was to take her vows and join the church, just to be with him. She disguised herself as a boy and passed herself off as his servant, and Marmion knew all of this. He also knew that both deeds, a woman dressing as a boy and a woman breaking her vows to join the church, were punishable by death. He didn't care though and turned her over to the church so that he could force marriage on another young woman whose lover he had ensured was exiled from the land for life. This man was no hero. However, in Beowulf, the main character, whose name is Beowulf, fights the horrid monster that is slaughtering the people of certain land. He is noble and ends up dying as he fights for those who are weak. So, poems have played a large part in history by preserving the histories and legends at a time when people did not have the written word. Poetry throughout the ages poetry is becoming a forgotten art form. Despite the fact that some of the greatest creative and artistic minds of all time chose this medium to express themselves, poetry is still slipping away from most people. Poetry has a breathtaking purity and poignancy if done well. It can convey thoughts, images, scenes, or emotions across centuries, cultures, and classes. Whether it is a pithy Chinese haiku or the haunting lines of Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Kubla Khan this art form packs a punch. Of course, poetic writing is all around us. It exists in lyrics, film scripts and dialogue, and even advertising. What is fading away from popular conscience is pure form poetry. The simple power of the limited number of words on a page communicating something vast and intrinsic to all of us. Sometimes poetry can depict a scene from history with layers of understanding, relevance, and pathos that we would never get from a picture or even a book. In modern times we have moved towards very limited versions of events fed to us from biased sources. Independent writing, art, and poems are the views of the ordinary person. They cannot be erased from history if we care for them properly and in this way history cannot be rewritten to suit the interests of today's dominant forces. This powerful mode of both expression and communication has been with humanity for thousands of years. The first example of known poetry is considered to be the ancient Mesopotamian poem Epic of Gilgamesh which dates from the 3rd dynasty of Ur circa 2100 BC. The poetic form predates much of what we take for granted in modern life. Despite this, the thoughts, feelings, and stories from our ancient forefathers are as clear and relevant to us today as they were to readers thousands of years ago. Poetry must stay with us long into the future not just as a way to connect humanity across all borders and boundaries, including time and space, but to keep an accurate recording of history that can never be corrupted. Poetry, the lost art form poetry is a form of expression that defies expectation, it is a form of art that comes from the heart, it is a play on words where thoughts and feelings converge, while many consider it a lost art form, poetry is a venue for emotions to be transformed. It is so much more than just words on a page or a nifty turn of phrase, poetry is a form of art that leaps off the page and speaks to the heart. 
It is a means of self-expression that encourages diversification. It is a totem from the heart that sets its author apart. It is a figure of speech that digs deep. It is a verbal exercise for which artists are inclined. Why is it considered a lost art form you may inquire? Is it a stylistic choice or simply a lack of desire? The best poetry stokes the fires within and gives the readers a win. The power of prose should be honored and never considered out of date. What other art form allows artists to better convey love or hate? Poetry has the capacity to broaden our horizons and expand our minds. The sky's the limit in terms of what we might find. Poetry can also bolster our ability to comprehend what we feel and know. It is up to the artist to determine its structure and flow. This brings us back to our central query which should not be answered with haste, the question of whether or not poetry is a lost art form should be considered case by case. Any art form that allows readers and artists to thrive should not be allowed to die, any creative endeavor that provides their creators with the opportunity to grow and expand should be given a helping hand and time to get on its feet, any form of expression that comes from the heart and encourages wordsmiths and readers to display their inner core cannot be dismissed or considered obsolete. Providing poetry to the new generation introduction our world is a constantly changing place, and we tend to change along with it. Literary works help us be inspired to perform bold actions in this world. They do this by teaching us lessons or motivating us. Our fast-paced world seems to be losing value in poetry and art. Valuing the deep thinking that goes into poems and valuing the poems themselves can allow you to see the beauty of using words to create something motivating and beautiful. What will you create? The power of words our thoughts are important and can help us learn. By analyzing what you learn, your thoughts and beliefs can morph into new ideas. Poetry helps us move along this pathway of learning. Rappers like Eminem are poets in their own way. They rhyme about their life, about their story. In addition, they help themselves understand themselves, learning in the process. As they map their thoughts into raps and poems, they are able to see their thoughts laid out in a pattern. We, as humans, have emotions that make us feel many different things. Using these emotions as fuel for ideas and thoughts can get us far into deep thinking. Furthermore, writing poetry can sharpen our thoughts and make us wise. The power of words is unlimited. Great people, such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi used only their voices and words to make their ideas known. Because of this, these amazing people made a considerable difference in their world. Be inspired. Be motivated. Writing a poem is intuitive, you simply need to organize your ideas and present them in words. You will be surprised to know that your ideas, emotions, and questions are worth knowing. We, as mankind, will make terrific advances with our words. You can be an artist with words, from writing deep tales to inspirational poems. Being creative only takes something small, like a single word, to become something huge. Conclusion Our words are our greatest weapon. You can use them to make unimaginable creations. Your thoughts matter. Imagination and art are not meant to be suppressed, they are meant to be loved and grown. Writing is an art that can grow and improve over time. Write. Think. Create. You will never regret creating beautiful works that inspire, motivate, and teach. Express yourself in poetry. Expression communication is knowing just how to use your words to convey the way you feel. Did you know that in writing, grammar can be butchered and you can become really famous for butchered grammar? It is all in the way you express the words. Feeling and emotions are not the same, they are different because emotions come from the mind and soul, but feelings include physical sensations. Feelings go away, but emotions linger on being sealed in your mind, unable to forget. Acrostic All of the lines in the poem will relate to the word written in an acrostic poem. The first letter of each line spells out a word, name, or phrase when the poem is read vertically. Here is an example. Shines bright during daytime ultraviolet rays penetrate the window noontime temperatures are rising reflections reflection is like peering into a magic mirror and seeing all parts of yourself, mind, body, and soul. Music Music will allow you to open the door to your soul. Music without the lyrics or words is a melody. Listen to some music without words and tell a story to the tunes and beats and it will become a song. Mirror mirror on the wall mirror mirror on the wall, who is the most talented of all? Remember that you have a magic mirror and it can only be described by the words you say. Describe your mirror in such a way that you want others to see or understand you. 
This should include physically, intellectually, and personally. Tell about yourself from the inside and out. Express yourself. In the heat of the summer, I do not rest that is when I do damage best I am the mosquito who loves to bite it is not hard to find me at night you will not escape my gruesome attack I will even bite you on the back the sun gives warmth to the earth for me to survive I am the mosquito and I am a live structure the structure includes breaks, stanzas, rhyme, and meter. Foot manometer, 1 foot dimeter, 2 feet trimeter, 3 feet tetrameter, 4 feet pentameter, 5 feet hexameter, 6 feet heptameter or septenary, 7 feet meter iambic pentameter, or a number of feet within a line of traditional verse. Stanza meters and rhymes are usually repeating or systematic. Example, I work my fingers to the bone all day long all day long something is going to come my way yeah. I will find a way today a way for you and me bring us out of poverty these old river blues will never die so, mama don't you cry for me don't cry for me I'm leaving on the delta queen gonna roll this river see what I can see gonna make a way for you and me don't ask why and don't you cry these old river blues will never die poetry and personal expression one of the most romantic forms of self-expression is poetry. It can also be one of the most difficult, which is probably why many people shy away from it. While most anyone can come up with a few lines that rhyme, writing poems that flow well, have a good rhythm, and are a true inspiration can seem like something only a true artist can accomplish. Taking the time to understand and explore the heart of poetry, however, can help to unveil some of the mystery and make this art form more accessible to everyone. If you have an interest in poetry or simply love writing or words, you owe it to yourself to take a closer look and discover the essence of this beautiful form of expression. At its heart, poetry is communication. But it is communication on a more intuitive level. Poetry paints pictures with words and these pictures convey sentiments and emotions in a way that ordinary prose does not. If you find it difficult or tedious to try to understand poems, try reading them with this in mind. Carefully read the words and think about the images or emotions that come to mind with those words. Thinking metaphorically, are the words representing other ideas? Can help as well. The idea is to gain an understanding of the feeling the artist is trying to convey, not necessarily the word-for-word -word interpretation. Once you have learned to read poetry in this new way, you can begin writing it yourself. It's not as daunting a task as it may seem. Using a similar method, begin to visualize the feelings you want to express. Are there any images that come to mind? Describe them, using powerful words and short descriptions. Fortunately, poetry has many varieties of forms, so you are not limited to only rhyming lines. Use your imagination and find words that resonate with your emotions, whether they may be commonly used or not. It may take some practice, but allowing yourself to think and write, poetically, can be accomplished and even mastered with some time and dedication. And it is certainly worth the time to engage in this beautiful, expressive art form. It will not only free your mind to think outside the box but open your heart to a new world of expression that can enrich your world as well as the world of those around you. Take time to discover poetry today and soon you may find a new poet within you. Poetry is valuable poetry is a release of feelings put into words, allowing the writer a feeling of catharsis. Poems are written art that inspires us, give rhythm to our emotions, and put a beat to our words. This is why poetry is valuable. Poetry is proof of who we are, what we are about, how we feel, and why. Poetry can lift our spirits, heal our hearts, and transport us to foreign lands. Poetry can enlighten us to the view of others. It bridges time and space. It introduces us to the beat of an artist's drum, lifts our spirits, and carries us to where we want to be. Writing poetry is akin to writing music. There is a rhythm to the words spoken aloud. The words are their own heartbeat. Many poems have a specific count, such as sonnets and haikus. They challenge the poet to fit their requirements while also expressing the poet's thoughts in a satisfying manner. This challenge and the desire to express oneself is a large part of why poetry feeds our soul. It is believed that both readings inspiring poetry and writing it helps hospital patients. Poetry is a positive way for children to get in touch with emotions they don't know how to deal with. It is believed that poetry can help those with depression. It is a creative way to express things that are difficult to look at one's life. Poetry is a positive way to vent or let out frustrations otherwise pent up. Learning poetry by heart is a fun and educational way to sharpen the mind and memory. 
It can be used to remember other things like piano scales and math formulas. It helps elderly people keep their minds sharp and their memories from failing as fast. Poetry is valuable because it brings the heart into the scope of literacy. It allows us to give life to thoughts and feelings in an unthreatening way. Poetry asks to be experienced. It calls to people in different ways. Some find a certain phrase in a poem exciting. Some love the imagery it evokes. While others write poetry to use that word they love. Whether it is the world's sound or meaning is irrelevant. The point is that by creating poetry they use the word in a way that lifts their spirits in a way only poetry can. Yes, poetry has value, in many different ways. And although not all poetry is happy, all poetry gives life to our feelings and illustrates to others what we wish to express in a way that satisfies our innate need to express ourselves in our own unique way. Tapping into the inner poet. Everyone may not be a naturally gifted writer, but there is certainly an inner poet in everyone. T.S. Eliot published an entire poem called, The Waste Land, in 1922 all starting from his feelings about a calendar month. The poem begins, April is the cruelest month, and from that phrase on he managed to write a literary masterpiece studied at universities across the world. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1948. What made his work outstanding? Well, his poems were certainly meaningful, including many references to academics of the past and of his time. Yet the poetry was also very disjointed, and only a scholar could pick out the parts that had meaning beyond sentence fragments. This bit of background into a well-lauded poet should be an inspiration to all. To announce to humanity that poetry comes from the inside, from fragments of the imagination, observed phenomena, and bits of learned tucked away into the subconscious. While inspiration to write a poem may not come to land on one's shoulder like some external muse, it may surprise many that the impetus to express through prose rather can come from within. Writing poetry, if one were to follow Eliot's example, is something like the process of making a word salad. Start by gathering the delicious components, and then mixing them together in a pleasing ballad. Just whatever form one chooses, whether a bob or haiku, remember to listen to the inner urging of the poet within. The actual content of poetry can neither be marked right or wrong. There is no test to fail here in choosing the wrong material. That is the beauty of coming to know the inner poet inside oneself. And once expressed, it is a written record of fragments of the individual consciousness. Others, in observing the poet's boldness, will respect the effort for art and art sake alone. Many are too intimidated to try themselves. But within all is a sleeping poet, waiting to be resurrected from slumber in order to create an imprint of past impressions. And there will be others, who are wanting to connect with the human spirit, will read the poem hoping to connect something of another spirit to theirs. If only the person picks up the pen and writes. In the writer's circle in a circle of writers, the poets are the brave artists who take the biggest risks. As the poet reads her epic piece concerning her late brother and their complex relationship, she lays bare her soul. She tells of emotions still so raw, in words confined by form yet flowing like a river. She resented him, she admired him, adored him, and despised him all of her life. Now that he is gone she is the survivor to author the story of the two of them. From her prior poems, it was plain to see that her mother hadn't loved her, and clearly favored him. Or perhaps that was just her impression. Either way, she bore the scars of the legacy she and her brother shared until he suddenly passed. She never had a chance to say her piece, to express those feelings still trapped in her soul. Only poetry can set her free. With rhymes and measured meter, she finishes those conversations, she says the unuttered words she never spoke to her brother with aplomb. She metaphorically introduces us to this man with whom she shared a tumultuous childhood. She shows us his humor, his charm, his temper, and his irresponsibility without directly stating such. Her meters flow like smooth, cool jazz on a hot day, then the phrases erupt into a verbal symphony of staccato shame, blame, and guilt. She takes the chance to let us know her, the struggles of her past and her hopes for resolution so that she can take back her life from the depths of grief and fully live again. Her art is an inspiration, yet terrifying in its unflinching honesty. The poem reaches inside of those gathered at the table and forces them to reflect on aspects of relationships that are buried beneath the surface. It's not best to blot or drown out the artist's words, we must listen, as she is calling our hearts to her own. Writing spiritual poetry, 
Poetry has a spiritual dimension bringing awareness to your spiritual nature and shedding light on the mystery of the spiritual realm as done through spiritual poetry. Poetry has a spiritual dimension. Writing spiritual poems allows the poet to experience the most useful exercise of the soul. Words in spiritual poetry are entrance points into spiritual life. It is an art of positive, uplifting, sacred, inspirational writings. Spiritual poetry writing can include Christianity, folk religion, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, transcultural, international faiths, new religious movements, Judaism, Samaritanism, Vietnamese folk religion, Japanese new religions, Indian religions, indigenous religions, ancient Egyptian religion, Zulu mythology, Bantu mythology, Iranian religions, Kurdish religions, and other spiritual worships of the world. Here is an example of Contemporary English Christianity Spiritual Poetry Alone in my room I lay grieving on my bed I suddenly feel a hand touch my head God sent me an angel to comfort my soul I'm not alone now her hand I will hold a comforting angel whom I did not fear stood there beside me and dried my tears. Special Occasions Spiritual poetry is used popularly on many special occasions like church, weddings, funerals, and other spiritual events. Spiritual poetry can rhyme or it does not have to rhyme at all. It is meant to give inspiration, hope, be uplifting to those whose hearts are heavy, calm emotions, offer peace and serenity, and more. High value, great beauty, strong feeling. Spiritual poetry holds high value and great beauty along with strong feelings. There are ways of making poetry a spiritual practice. It can help one overcome self-centeredness. It should offer empathy and insight. Living deeply will allow you to write great spiritual poetry well. A poet is an artist. In today's modern world. A male is often called a poet, a female is known by poetess. In the old world, both males and females were poets. Poetry and yourself. In our modern, fast-paced world it's very easy to become disconnected from spirituality and a sense of who we are. This can lead to living a hollow existence with little joy and distant relationships. In order to become a more spiritual person, it is necessary to become more aware of both your feelings and the world around you. Only when this has been done can you reconcile the two and achieve a sense of spirituality. When it comes to increased spirituality creativity and forms of art are the pathway necessary. One of the purest and most accessible forms of art is poetry. Poetry has become less popular in today's times. This is a shame because without it people are missing out on an easy way to understand and express themselves. You can write poetry right now. Poetry does not have to be in a certain language or format. Some of the most famous poetry in the world is written in dialects or with colloquialisms contained in the text. With poetry, you do not have to learn to draw or go out and buy paints and canvases. If you have a pen and paper you're all set. If you're stuck for what to write about, think about how you feel right now. If you feel nothing in particular you can write about that. Write about what you can see from your window. The chances are as your poem progresses you will start to add your thoughts and feelings into the description. You may not even realize you felt a certain way until you see it on the page. Think of topics or subjects that you are interested in. Maybe you saw something on the news that got your attention recently. Literally, anything can be a starting point for poetry. When you finish your poem you can leave it as it is or edit it. Sometimes the process of editing represents a person's desire to connect with other people. They may remove points that are on a tangent or reword things that might not be clear to another person reading the poem. Your poem can be something you just write to make yourself feel good. It could be part of a collection that you eventually publish or it might be something you share with others. The choice is yours. How to write poems and do poetry. Poetry can be seen as an obscure and inaccessible art form. The impression people get is of very archaic words and difficult prose all tied together with inexplicable rigid forms that make poetry hard to read, let alone write. This impression may be arrived at by observing certain people who favor more strictly crafted forms of poetry. It certainly doesn't represent the whole landscape of the art. Poetry can be written in any form, any style, with punctuation, no punctuation, or unusual uses of punctuation. It can be short or long. The lines in poetry can be short or long or the work can read more like prose. Carol Ann Duffy's poems are an example of a more prose-like style of poetry. 
Poems are thought of as rhyming on every line but they can also rhyme every other line or not at all. Essentially if you want to write in an established style of poetry then you must follow the rules and customs of that style. However, this doesn't mean that your own expression can't be written however you think is the best way to write it. Even the idea that poetry should be brief has often been challenged and some very famous works have resulted from it. If you want to write poetry you need to only think about what you want to convey or express to a reader. This could be anger, frustration at a mundane point of life, or a description of something beautiful. The question is not necessary if you can manage this and get all your capitals and repetitions in the right places. The question is how can language, rhyme, or punctuation be used as a tool to get your expression across more effectively. Read some famous poems for inspiration. Vulture, by Chinua Achebe uses adjectives to describe how vultures, ugly beings to us, are affectionate and loving to each other. Seamus Heaney's, The Early Purges, is an example of how sound can be described in such a way that the reader can feel the scene being described. To be a poet you need only to write a poem. To write a poem you only need to wish to convey something to another person. How well you can do this is how great of a poet you can be. Poetry will allow you to develop a deeper understanding of language and where certain words are more effective than others or perhaps certain words are more effective together. Writing poetry will make you a more engaging person to listen to in life generally and you will find it easier to powerfully express yourself. Pick up your pen today. Great poetry writing tips to inspire. Most contemporary poets write in free verse. Being aware of the world around you and always looking for inspiration will help you create the best poetry. Most poets work to find vivid images or narratives that will get their points across skillfully and artfully. It is important to consider the heart or main idea of the poem. Poetry is always interpreted in different ways by different people. When you get a rejection slip, do not let it get you down, because even some of the most famous poets in the world have received them too. When you practice creating works of art by using language, then you are creating poetry. Some of the greatest works of literature have been represented by poetry. Poetry Explications This is a short analysis that describes the possible meanings and relationships of the words, images, and other small units that make up a poem. It is also an effective way for readers to connect a poem's plot and conflicts with its structural features. There are certain patterns that provide insight into the dramatic situation. Asterisk rhythm and meter influences the perception of the speaker and language. Asterisk patterns of sound helps in creating sound effects and often cluster significant words. Asterisk visual patterns displays how the poem looks on the page. Asterisk rhetorical pattern statements following the same format. Asterisk rhyme the end words joined by sound. Great poetry writing tips to inspire. Asterisk write a poem a day. Asterisk don't use unnecessary words, phrases, and lines. Asterisk mix art and music with your words. Asterisk write using honest thoughts, feelings, and expressions. Asterisk give support to other poets your favor, like by purchasing magazines their poetry is featured in. Asterisk attend poetry events, poetry book signings, poetry contests, and more. Asterisk make a connection with other poets to share your thoughts and discuss writing poems. Asterisk rewrite your creation to make it more compelling. Asterisk read to expand your vocabulary. Asterisk learn to accept rejection and turn it into constructiveness. Asterisk avoid using cliches. Asterisk use metaphors. Following these tips will help you improve your poetry writing skills. Music can help you open the window to your soul and inspire your thoughts. Anyone can write a poem, but you either have to be born with natural talent or practice to become a real hit. Writing with the power to move people emotionally is the key to writing great poetry. A traditional haiku poetic form haiku is a poetic form that focuses on images from nature. A haiku poem is written in three lines with 17 syllables. The syllable count is 5 7 fifths. When writing this form of poetry, the author emphasizes simplicity, intensity, and direct expression. Haiku has quite a long history that dates back to the 9th century and it originated in Japan. This Japanese art of poetry is known around the globe today. Here is an example of haiku. Shadows never speak around the corner they peek shadows follow me the first English written haiku poem was published in 1913.
English haiku follows the Japanese rules, but the rules are not quite as strict in the English form. In the English form, it is the syllables and subject matter that differs. Haiku poets were known across the world by the 21 RST century. Romance language haiku began in the 19th century. Two hearts beat as one your smile beaming like the sun you're my only one today. Haiku is written in many different languages other than Japanese that include English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, Arabic, Gujarati, and Estonian. Kaiku does not have to rhyme. Haiku artists or poets can invoke emotion with their words, and a true inspiration to readers and other poets. Haiku can paint vivid pictures in the reader's mind. Digital learning platforms are available today for beginners who want to learn how to write haiku. These apps make it really easy for teachers of haiku to focus on student learning. Haiku is a way of looking at the physical world. Haiku poetry in English has been recognized since 1968 by the Haiku Society of America. This organization offers membership applications, yearly haiku contests, educational resources for learning to write haiku, haiku definitions, newsletters, and more. When you become known as a poet, then it is wise that you know how to write poetry in a variety of forms, and this includes haiku. Ways to evoke emotion in poetry Contemporary poetry of today is much different than the traditional old world poetry of which we were taught in school by literature. Real poetry paints vivid pictures and along with feeling real emotion. Here are just a few ways to evoke emotion in poetry. Asterisk using the active voice will add emotion to poetry. Asterisk use action verbs instead of linking verbs. Asterisk it is wise to avoid using gerunds which hinder the meter and flow. Asterisk avoid using adverbs which hinder the flow. Asterisk it is best to use metaphors instead of similes. By using abstract words, it will help the writing speak to the images. By practicing writing poetry that allows the readers to see, hear, taste, feel, and smell will help evoke emotion in your work. The depth and talent of your poems can be truly breathtaking to your readers. Metaphors will surely bring you closer to emotion. Remember that poetry does not have to rhyme. A creative writing course can be helpful and informative to beginners. By studying poetic forms, it will help inspire you to write poetry easily. Allow your words to have soul, feeling. Metaphors can paint a better picture of comparing two objects. Add characters, people, to your work that make the poem come to life. Birds chirp a lullaby at the peak of the morning sun. Speedy as the dragonfly, wish I could catch just one. Clovers fill the meadow and daisies are in bloom. Brilliant as the rainbow heavens scent perfumes. I hear a sparrow singing sweet tunes of joy and glee. Sing a song, sweet sparrow, sing a song for me. Getting your readers to feel what you feel can be a challenge for most writers. Some of these feelings of emotion may include excitement, despair, anticipation, joy, anger, etc. Leave your emotions written in your poem. Add a few strong images to help your readers envision your experiences in your poetry. Poetry holds real beauty and much value. There are natural born poets and those who learn. Poetry is the art of words. There are times of drama, prose, and learning a constant desire for burning laughter and tears and feelings of fear, all in a poet's world.